Hey. Raj. Hey, buddy. Yo. Can I leave the back room? <laughs> come up front? No, you cannot come up front. You want to watch a movie? I don't want to watch a movie with you. Idiot. I've been back here for 400 years. Dude, no. The last time that I even thought about letting you come up front, I killed a guy. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. So you stay back there, and you think, you think about what you made me do. All right. I swear to God. Oh, hello, internet fans, and welcome to 3B Video. I'm your host, Rotten Roger DeMarco, and today we're going to be talking about Fred Olin Ray's 1985 film, Biohazard. It's a little alien movie. All right, for those of you who don't know about this film, here is your plot synopsis. You've got this psychic lady who the government are running experiments on. She puts on a metal helmet that's hooked up to a bunch of tubes and wires and things in the desert, and using her psychic power, she accidentally sucks an alien through her brain, and then the alien runs amok yeah, it's super muddy, but it's ridiculously awesome. Psychics and aliens and monster suits. But before we get into my overall thoughts of this film, first, let's take a look at... Ryan Rogers! Splatter facts. We have 12 dead bodies. We have four titties. Mm -hmm. That ratio is a little skewed, but we'll take it. We have sexy psychic science. We have... 80s science. A lot of sciencey things, you know, going around science. If you throw a lot of big words in there, people think that you know what you're talking about. One typical army fuck up. That's a Return of the Living Dead reference. Deep cut, lots of desert driving. Discount Leslie Easterbrook, monster POV. Homeless barbecue. Mm -hmm. His dinner is in the oven. Gratuitous fog machine and a skin peel reveal. The methods of death include but are not limited to fried, clawed, sneaky chomped, off screened, God damn you! Neck bite, mauled, I don't know, rawr, rawr, rawr. stabbed. Ree, 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 ree. Copyright and face sucked. <laughs> Tastes like chicken. All right, so now on to my overall thoughts of this film. For those of you who don't recognize the name Fred Olin Ray, I have covered many of his escapades in the past year on this channel, which you can find here or here in one of these buttons. Doesn't matter, but the name Fred Olin Ray. Guys, he is synonymous with making these shoestring budget, guerrilla filmmaking style movies on the go, X amount of dollars, X amount of days, movie time. And this is a classic homage to that 50s style dude in a rubber suit monster movie, which I praise all of the time. Fred Olin Ray had his son for the time period in which this movie was getting created. So they measured his son and built this monster suit. So Fred Olin Ray got to have his son play the monster in this movie, which is fucking incredible. This is sort of like the best summer ever. If you think about it, if you were a little kid, you would be like, you mean to tell me I get to put on a Halloween costume and kill people. This is just one of those standard dude in a suit monster movies where a monster is just roaming around picking people off one by one and despite the fact that this movie had a very limited budget it's done very genuinely it's very fun campy for all the right reasons. So this psychic Lisa Martin who's played by Angelique Pettyjohn who I assume was like an adult film star or just a, a burlesque dancer. I'm not sure all I know is she was known for being nude. So she plays this psychic who brings this alien to earth with her brain powers. You could tell they were working with not a lot of money and not a lot of time and they're like 
yeah, sure, she brings an alien with a brain and the, through a tube in the desert, and then that's how the little alien runs around and fucking kills everybody. Makes perfect sense, right? Not really, if you stop and think about it, but we're not here to stop and think. We're here to watch monsters chew people the fuck up. And I think that, you know, this being a monster movie with a suit, the creature looks very good in all of the nighttime shots. But when they put this suit in direct sunlight, you sort of get that Sabon made for TV Power Rangers villain look. Too much daylight on a cheap costume. But when it's in the nighttime, I'm not gonna go so far as to say that it's terrifying because it's not. Because it's very campy and tongue in cheek and fun. But it looks better at nighttime. You wanna hide all the zippers and the foam padding in the shadows as best as you can. I think what's so brilliant about Fred Olin Ray's style of filmmaking is that he spends all this time paying homage to the films that he grew up with and the stuff that he loves but at the same time he knows his audience very well and he gives it this grindhouse exploitation drive-in vibe so it has this all this wonder and charm and hokey acting of a 50s monster movie but then there's random scenes with women taking baths or, you know, making out on a couch with your nipples hanging out over your bra or whatever, like very... We need some tits right here, guys. Can we get some tits? We need some... It's looking too much like a 50s movie. Can we get a couple tits and then maybe drip some blood on a camera? Let's, let's 80s it up a little bit here. Because it's very funny how random the sexual moments are. They're balls deep in this investigation of hunting down this alien. And it's like, you wanna come over for dinner and maybe we can discuss this alien thing? You know, I sure would like to bone ya. Really uh, adult film segues. It's not subtle is what I'm getting at. Speaking of the sexual moments, I think it's very funny that the one girl is taking a bath and then her boyfriend comes inside from, you know, working in the garage with a screwdriver on some wires and he gets into the bathtub fully clothed. I'm like, what are you doing? That's a weird thing. Now you're making a mess. You're ruining the floor. There's not enough towels to clean that up. And you didn't think about that. And you're kind of an asshole. And the thing about this movie and getting the story to progress and move forward as rapidly as it does, because it's a very condensed runtime, is that each character makes increasingly stupid decisions. You know what we should do? We should, we should split up. Come on now. It's one of my favorite tropes, but it's here in abundance. You know how there are people out there who say that Franklin from Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the most annoying character of all time? <laughs> Come on, Franklin. It's gonna be a fun trip. They obviously don't watch a lot of movies because there's a character in this movie named Rula who wins the award for most annoying character of the century. And you need to see this movie to believe how much you want to kill her. There is a really cute thing in this movie where they take a fun little stab at E.T. There's a homeless man who finds a poster of E.T. So he hangs it up on the side of the dumpster and the alien attacks said homeless man and then does a double take at the E.T. poster, tears it down and jumps up and down on it. When they made this movie, Fred Olin Ray made a deal to where he could just get the short ends of film. And for those of you who don't know what short ends means, it's when a big production shoots on a roll of film and then there's little bits left over, they cut that off. So Fred Olin Ray got a deal on a bunch of these short ends. So a lot of the shots are really quick because he was just reaction monster, piecing this film together a couple of frames at a time. And so while he's doing that, he also did not have the money for permits and they shot this film on weekends. I truly admire that form of filmmaking that 100% by any means necessary. Hey Steve, you go down to the end of the block, you look around, make sure there's no cops. Mike, you go to the end of that alley and make sure no one's coming around. Julie, you sit here and you scream and pull your tits out and then run and we're gonna get this shot and we're gonna get the fuck out of here before the cops come. I love that. I just think that that's super ballsy and that's something that cinema misses now. Stuff like this needs to be praised, which is why Fred Olin Ray is a total pioneer of on the cheap filmmaking and I believe that he deserves to be recognized as such because he's one of these crazy talented dudes. He can make a dollar out of a nickel and he can get a whole dollar on screen. 
So in my personal opinion, this movie is 100% popcorn as fuck. Because it's just this weird little over the top rubber suit monster movie that actually has a ton of heart. That you can tell that this crew put everything they had into making this movie and they were more than pleased with the end product. And it's just a movie that doesn't get any recognition that needs to be found, dusted off, and explored for what it is. This weird little campy movie that just kicks major ass. And in the grand scheme of things, you know, in the world, it might not be Oscar worthy. It might not be mind blowing. It might not be the greatest movie that anyone has ever seen out there. But in here, in 3B video, this B movie is the movie. But uh, I suppose I should probably get going because after all, it's a lot of movies out there. Somebody's got to watch them. So why not me? right? You still can't come out. Think about it. Think 